Prerock here again today to talk about glycolysis. Uh, so we're going to talk a bit about glycolysis. I'm going to show you the holistic approach to it. This question initially, I'm going to read it, you'll realize is going to sh is going to point to a lot more lessons than just what we learn about glycolysis. So let's get straight into it. It says glycolysis is a subset of cellular respiration, which is a process responsible for generating much of the ATP in the human body. How many molecules of ATP are produced when one molecule of glucose goes through glycolysis? So initially you might be thinking, okay, this seems like a relatively simple problem, but I'm going to try to show you that a lot of students when they're studying tend to memorize a lot of things without entirely thinking about what the question is asking. And that's going to be uh, demonstrated here. So the keyword here is obviously cell respiration. And within respiration, we're specifically focusing on one main part, which is glycolysis. So that's that's our focus. But for the sake of completeness, you know, it's not just glycolysis because there's also the Krebs cycle, which, by the way, you should also know it's called the tricarboxylic acid cycle. And you should also know that it's called the um, citric acid cycle as well. So you should know these names um, because all of the students always get confused, but all these are always is talking about the Krebs cycle. And the last part of respiration is the electron transport chain. Just mentioning it for the sake of completeness. With that being said, anytime I talk about a metabolic pathway such as glycolysis, a lot of students think they have to memorize this. You see this pathway about every intermediate, every structure, everything whatsoever? You don't. You don't actually need to memorize this. I mean, if you did, phenomenal. It's really good to know a lot of these intermediates. There's a wrap that I can show you guys. It's a really great wrap. It's on YouTube, actually. It's, it's to the tune of Thrift Shop. I'll link it in the description below. But the point is, you don't need to memorize this. I, I think it would help you, but you don't need it. Instead, you need to do three main things. You should know what goes into thing into the into the pathway and what comes out. So for glycolysis, we know that glucose goes in and when you what you get out is two pyruvate molecules, right? So here's a good thing to know because this is obviously glucose is a six carbon sugar. So if you if you get two pyruvates out, you should realize that pyruvates are three carbons each. So it's kind of a great way to understand the process without understanding the nuts and bolts. The other thing you should know about metabolic processes are the ATP slash NADH formed. Are there any formed? How many? And it, and how, how are they formed exactly? And the last thing you should know about any metabolic process is where does it happen? For glycolysis, this is the cytoplasm. Because as many of you know, glycolysis is the most fundamental energy harvesting process that exists. It exists in almost every organism. And for that reason, it needs to, it needs to happen in a place that's conducive and accessible to every organism. And the cytoplasm is exactly that place because the cytoplasm is in every organism and that's why glycolysis happens in every organism. So with that being said, let's talk about the energy content. So again, I told you, you don't have to memorize the specific steps where ATP is made. But for anyone of you who's been through high school biology, you'll know that glycolysis energy-wise happens in two main steps. There's an energy investment phase, right? And in the energy investment phase, you use two ATPs because you have to make the glucose, a reactive molecule. So you have to react it with two ATPs. And then there's a second phase called the energy payoff phase. And in the energy payoff phase, you form four ATPs and you also form two NADHs. But that's beside the point because our question was asking about ATPs. How many ATPs are formed? And so you'll notice that you actually end up forming four ATPs. And at the end of the day, because you form four, but you used up two, at the end of the day, you're technically forming two net ATPs, right? And in high school, in high school, what happens, and in textbooks, what happens is that they say that you form two ATPs. And students get so used to memorizing, okay, there are two ATPs formed in glycolysis, that they often forget the main point, which is there is an energy investment phase in glycolysis. And though you might not have to memorize each step of glycolysis, you sure as hell should remember that two ATPs are used initially because you need to realize you have to make glucose a reactive molecule before you can do anything with it, right? So two ATPs are used. And then in the energy payoff phase, we get our ATPs money's worth because four ATPs are formed. So in reality, believe it or not, four ATPs are formed in glycolysis, okay? I know a lot of students think it's two because that's what they implicitly memorize. And it's unfortunate because when you memorize something like that, 
you often forget the science behind it. And that's why I always like to break things down. You should really remember the steps before you come to a conclusion. In this case, you need to realize that that two is coming from the fact that there are actually four formed and two are used up. So when I asked this question, I wasn't doing it to trick anyone. I was doing it more to show you that you should always think about where you're getting your answer from. And the answer here is actually B. The answer is B. Four ATP molecules are produced, but there's an energy investment phase where two ATPs are used. So there's a net production of two ATPs. But if you ask me straight up how many molecules of ATP are produced, the answer is four. If you ask me how many net ATP produced, that would be two. But if it's just ATP, if it asks you just ATP produced in glycolysis, the answer is four. So with that, I hope this question made sense. It got you to think a lot more and see that there's a lot more you need to consider when you get asked these so-called memory-based questions because sometimes they're not memory-based. They just hint at a more conceptual phenomenon. All right, guys, uh, please like, share, subscribe, and let me know if you have any questions. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. If you want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.